yes students so uh, today uh, what we have we have the introduction to dysentery as i told you uh, in the second or third lecture while discussing the various types of the machine learning where you have been observed in the supervised learning what you have been observed you have been observed the supervised learning when we have the continuous nature of the data then we have a regression then we have the regression so regression use the continuous nature of data and the regression we have seen by the linear based multiple and polynomial so with help of the three different kind of the regression you have seen the what is mean by the regression and regression concept and now after that what we have we have the dysentery so dysentery is also use the continuous nature of data but dysentery has the own nature so that's why i am just focusing the dysentery properly so what i have used i will take the different example to explore the what is the dysentery so let us move to the next part which is describe the thing properly so this is the our important statement and which is highlighted uh, by me over here so dysentery has many analogies in real life and turns out and it has influenced a wide area of the machine learning covering both classification and regression so what is the advantage you are getting from this slide that is the regression is a much supervised learning algorithm see in the machine learning algorithm i am not uh, writing any algorithm i will use i will discuss the technical method by which we will solve the problem so the point we have to keep in mind dysentery itself is a supervised learning algorithm by which we can solve the problem based on the classification and regression and decision analysis or dysentery can be used to visually and expertly represent decisions and decision making so why dysentery we are using because the representation of dysentery algorithm will be form of the tree manner and from the tree manner we will try to find the decision we will try to take the decision or we will follow the decision making properly so that is a concept from this concept we will start the dysentery so the question it should not be ended over here so what is actual dysentery so dysentery is a map of the possible outcomes of a series of the related choice and it allows an individual or organization to weigh possible actions against one another based on their cost probabilities and benefits so ultimate what we are observing dysentery is basically a dysentery is a, a tree representation of the our algorithm we are the at each and every level at each and every point we will try to find the decision it is just just like simple example if you want to go anywhere then there are so many paths so you will choose the appropriate paths where you have to go so what you will do you will cover the some distance of the path and you will take to take the decision suddenly uh, suppose that you are moving by the road you are moving by the road uh, roadways or by the road then what happened some roads are blocked then what you will do you will change your desired path so what you are doing after reaching the certain point you find that there is no possibilities to move from one place to another place or there is no possibility because there was a hurdle there was a, uh, some problems you are not able to move so you will change your path you will divert the route so this is what you are taking the decision and this is to be happen with the our decision making process a decision making algorithm so here we have a term that is a decision tree because we will represent our decision making steps in form of the tree so we have a decision tree so decision tree typically start with a single uh, node and that known as the root node and which branches into the possible outcomes and each of those outcomes leads to additional nodes which branch off it into the other possibilities and it this is gives a uh, like a decision tree shape so this is what if you know uh, if you have familiar with the tree data structure then definitely you can easily understand such part so this is the point we have to understand while understanding the everything we have to understand the concept properly now this diagram is visible to all this diagram is visible to all yes sir visible yes sir yes, sir. yeah good so in the dependent variable uh, we have the name of the variable that is play so dependent variable means uh, our uh, y variable we will decide our we have the possibility to play the game or not 
suppose uh, on the condition of the based on the weather forecasting you just need to play a game so what is the point suppose we have the 22 people so out of the 22 people 13 people are ready to play while rest of the people nine people are not ready to play so if uh, uh, what is the probability we can measure so 13 by the 22 so that will be the probability for the playing the game the rest of the probability that is 9 divided 9 is 9 uh, 9 uh, by the 22 will be the probability of the not playing the game out of these factors out of these information we can say if a weather is sunny so 12 people will belong to the or will ready to move to the sunny weather in the sunny weather after seeing the sunny weather 12 people out of the 12 people we can see six are ready but uh, rest of the six are not ready and if uh, uh, weather is overcast then uh, they have decided if weather will be the forecast so four people uh, will play and one people will not play and if uh, weather is rainy so out of the 22 out of the 22 you can observe over here out of the 22 if weather is rainy so three people will play the game and do not play the game we have the two so if we expand our sunny for overcast or rainy uh, node these are the node actually these are nodes so people decide or uh, people decide or bifurcate our information based on the weather condition so if uh, uh, humidity is less than 70% or less than equal to 7% or greater than 70% so we can divide our information we can divide our decision or based on the our humidity suppose humidity is less than 70 or equal to equal to 70% or 70 so out of the six people or we can say the uh, uh, we can say the to out of the eight people eight people will play the game and rest of the three people rest of the people that is the three people will not play the game so out of the 12 people out of the 12 uh, person those who who are looking for the sunny weather so 70 per less than uh, equal to 70 we have humidity so eight people are going that part only but rest of the part belong to the four only so out of the uh, uh, this one uh, four out of the four so you can easily observe that one play one person is just want to play the game and three people are not ready to play the game when the humidity is greater than 70 so humidity is a factor that not be applicable to the overcast or rainy so that is the point you have to understand properly and suppose that in the rainy time there if rainy is windy if rainy is windy and if it is true so no one just ready to play the game so we have the zero so out of the five two are the uh, go, uh, two goes for the true for the when we have the rain bindi and uh, when we have the rainy as a bindi manner so wind is blowing fastly so if it is not blowing fastly during the rainy time so uh, three people are ready to play the game and do not play we have the zero so from this factor what we are observing at each and every level we have some decision and based on our no decision we can decide the next level what would be possibility so humidity is a factor that can be decided after choosing the sunny weather that is not applicable over here the overcast that is not applicable over here the rainy so that is the point we have to understand windy is not applicable over here the sunny so that is the point we have to understand properly so this is what this is the our decision tree concept decision tree before understanding decision tree i am taking the simple example to explain the what is the decision tree and how decision tree will play the work so what you are observing over here if you are dependent variable is our play is a our is a play is our dependent variable so overcast or sunny and rainy will be the our independent variable so based on these independent variable sunny overcast rainy the people will play the game that is the point you have to understand now this is a clear to all right now yes sir everything is drawn over here but you have to identify what is the flow of the information same information we will see by the practical so everything will be clear to all so dependent variable will be the play that is the play of the cricket game the play of the volleyball the cricket or the any other game that is depend on the our circumstances or the situation of the forecasting of the weather so if it is like this one then we can play the game if it is uh, like this one then we will not play the game so based on the circumstances we have designed our 
decision and that is what this is known as the sunny overcast rainy windy and humidity all these are followed by the our some notes details now next we have the another example i am taking so i heard many times that people are busy to students are busy to uh, uh, project execution project and some other kind of the project so what i decided i just inserted this image over here to tell my idea suppose you are busy to project uh, busy to develop the project so what happened there is a big question in your mind so now your mind is hypothetical to take the decision should i should i uh, uh, build the project or should i go for the project or should i leave the project based on these factors uh, you will ask yourself should i start the project or not if i am starting the project so is it important for the company if it is important for the company so it is too risky is it too risky means so maybe the within the given deadline i am not able to complete so there will be too risky but if it is risky then if it is yes then uh, yes consider not to be involved if it is not too risky so uh, it is not too risky so i can start the project so based on the given deadline okay we have a four days how i can develop the my project within the four days so that is a too risky but i found i have the four months to develop the my project it means there is no too risky there is no too risky project this is not too risky project i can develop and design my project within the given deadline that is four months are sufficient days but if the project is not important so you are not need to ask anyone but if it is important then you will ask the yourself is it important for the company if yes then we have seen that it is too risky or not too risky but if it is not important then you will ask the question yourself if uh, the project is not important then why i am doing along with this project why i am contact to the faculty sir uh, can we develop the project but if it is not important then why you are communicating so you will get uh, you will take a decision you will take a decision sir uh, this project is uh, not useful but with the help of this project i can learn a lot so i can improve the my coding so that is the point is it is it applicable it is feasible to improve the my knowledge is it feasible to improve the my career uh, uh, my programming skill so if it is yes then you can start a project so there are two way by which you can start a project either to uh, to uh, design the good project to get a good marks or you can start the project to learn something properly or to can improve uh, you can improve your knowledge you can improve your uh, the programming skill as well but if it is not improve it is not important towards a career if it is not important to improve your programming skill then do not start the project so these are the basic terms why we can understand what you have to do so it is just like equal to the boolean variable yes or no zero one true false so what you are observing in this example you can easily say we are talking about the classification so what you are observing in the dysentery dysentery is mostly used in the case of the classification that is the point you have to understand so that's why we have a term dysentery classifier when we use the dysentery with the regression approach along with the regression approach then we have the dysentery regressor so that is the little bit difference you have to understand the little bit difference you have to keep in mind properly so is it clear to all right now so far everything is clear or any anyone who need to ask a question Yes, yes sir. sir. So, can you repeat the last part? Uh, last one is saying to us: if your project is not important, then it is not useful for the company. Uh, so, okay. not that the difference between classification and the regression one that you say. Uh, yeah, regression. See what you are observing, as I told you previously. When we have to solve any problem based on the regression problem, then our nature of the data would be the continuous mean. Okay. but when talking about the classification then at the time of the classification your nature of the data would be in form of the category so our data will be represented by the two way one is a categorical data and another one is a continuous nature way so when we have the categorical data then our problem is under coming to the classification so dysentery is one of the important algorithm which belong to the both kinds of approaches so when we are having the continuous nature of the data inside the dysentery let me repeat once again if we have the dysentery followed by the continuous nature of the data so we will talk about the dysentery regressor when we have the dysentery uh, along with the data which is followed by the classification nature of the data 
or categorical data so dysentery along with the categorical uh, categorical data then at the time the dysentery is known as the dysentery classifier so what you are observing from the my word dysentery is only the important algorithm which belong to the both approaches and which support the both kind of the nature of the data continuous and categorical as well this was my point now clear yes sir <clears throat> okay good so uh, this is a dysentery i am taking the different example to explore to elaborate the dysentery i am have a good amount okay after the spending the two or three years in industry so what happened and now after the uh, having seen to the other people now you wish to have your own car so you are trying to buy your own car so what is happened should i should i buy car so if you think now i should have a bike so first decision you are taking as a yes okay so even purchasing the new uh, car or any uh, old car doesn't mean but you are purchasing a car then if transfer facility is available then why i should i purchase the car so that is a simple example suppose you want to visit a particular city where you want to regular you want to go regularly so it is better idea to you found that you are just by the uh, public transportation and that is not a cost by the public transportation you can go by the 10 rupees or you can covering the 15 km distance by the within 10 rupees but if you go uh, if you cover the 15 km by your own car then you are charging or it is just you are expensing uh, or you are spending the 100 rupees or maybe the 200 rupees and so which is the too costly compared by the public transportation so definitely we have to understand while taking the car or while purchasing the car so if uh, there is no good tra public transportation is available to uh, reach my home so i must purchase the car so that definitely we have this point but if i am not purchasing a car but i have decided i will not purchase a car but i have a question that is a good point you must have as a good decision maker you must have the answer of the at the yes condition or at the no condition okay why you are not purchasing so there must be a justification there must be proper reason why you are not purchasing the car so if i am not purchasing the car so i have to ask the question do i often travel outside the my city if i am just in the uh, in a every in a week in each and every week on the certain sunday i have to go uh, outside the my country to uh, market the my product or something like this when anything whatever example so if i am going by the public transportation or any other way so it would be too costly so it is better idea to i must have a own vehicle so definitely we must purchase a car so definitely i am considering this should be the buying should be there but if it is uh, i am not frequently i am not going to or or each and every week at the certain sunday or maybe the 15 days camp i am not going to the house of my city rarely after the three month or four month i have to go so i no need to purchase a car this is the only justification so this is the what this is the car buying decision maker you have to do and this is the real application real example which is provided by the dysentery classifier so when you are classifying your nature of the information nature of the data by the two way yes or no so this is a simple example i have taken over i hope this example is clear to all is it clear to all yes sir okay see this is the example i am taking the real life apply example so do not think sir you are not covering the part of syllabus no it is a part of the syllabus but this is a real application real example why which the concept of the dysentery will be more clear and gives that's why i am taking this point okay so now i am taking this uh, diagram over here so uh, a student asked me the question previously in the previous lot student asked me question sir uh, what is the difference between the linear data and non linear data so i explained so i am repeating the uh, this statement in simple way so in the linear regression what we have seen we have used the y equal to mx plus c equation that is the based on the straight line equation but in the case of the our uh, uh, linear data what you are observing y equal to m1 x1 Uh, plus uh, uh, m2 x2 and so and so m n x n and plus c. So in this case, what you are ob observing that in the linear data we are having the multiple linear data. 
in the second example y equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus uh, m2 m3 x3 and so on so mn xn so here we are not having the any path so in this case always degree of the our x variable independent variable would be always one so this is a simple difference that you have to understand but in the case of the non linear data just like the polynomial regression as we have seen so when we have when in this case we will have the one independent variable one dependent variable but independent variable will be recognized by the degree and by this degree our line will not be designed by the straight line it line will be designed by the curve manner or curved line we will see and definitely with this great advantage is our data uh, points will be close to the line this is about biggest advantage we have seen so this is a little bit differences we have to understand the in the linear uh, or multiple linear regression uh, we have to use the linear data or the data is sometimes known as the linear data so i am speaking over here why in the non linear data will be identified by the our polynomial regression or we can say the our non linear regression so in the examination i can ask the just differentiate between the non linear and linear regression so you will not required to say sir you didn't tell us you didn't teach us the about the non linear regression linear regression so you have to understand what is the basic differences and from these differences you can try to answer for the proper justification that is a clear now this is clear to all right now this simple example is clear yes sir okay you are people are required to keep all the points properly because in my slide everything is mentioned clearly and everything will contain the important points from the my slide the question may ask so keep in mind properly so now what is the dysentery algorithm that is a point so dysentery algorithm is what and why dysentery algorithm we have to use this is the important slide so i am just writing something over here so i am just uh using the highlighter to explain the my idea so a question we should have why dysentery first let me read this is an important slide you can't forget you have to understand this is our important slide now let me uh, explain the thing properly so dysentery why we have to use this is the big portion we should have as although we have seen but i am explaining once again over here dysentery is considered to be the one of the most useful machine learning algorithm since it can be used to solve the variety of the problems and here are the few reasons why you should use a dysentery first one it is considered to be the most understandable machine learning algorithm so this is most understandable machine learning algorithm and can be easily interpreted this is the first difference second difference it can be used for the classification and regression problem so when we have any problem which is supported by the regression classification then you can use the dysentery that is the best algorithm and unlike the most machine learning algorithm it works effectively with non linear data it will work effectively i can highlight this one it will work effectively with the non linear data so definitely we have to understand the you can observe over here in the non linear data linear data just i shown the few seconds ago in the previous slide in the non linear data polynomial is better example but in the linear data what you are observing our data points are not close to the our regression line or predicted line so there are many chance i can have the many error or huge error in the my model so unlike the most machine learning algorithm so that's why it is written over here it works effectively with the no linear data so if talking about the polynomial regression then if talking about the dysentery classifier so dysentery classifier will provide the better result or in terms of the accuracy we can say so that is the reason we have to use a dysentery algorithm so while doing the practical parts you will feel its real things now yes sir you are true now constructing a descent tree is very quick process is it is used only the one feature per not to split the data it is just like a simple example we can take why why what is the this statement say to us descent tree construction is a very simple steps just you have to choose a one feature and based on the one feature you can decide just like this example 
student is uh, uh, the uh, x y z is the name of the person is this person is a student or faculty if this is a student then he has to move into the left side if it is a faculty then he has to move into the left side right side now if this is a student then what is the its uh, speciation so definitely we can say there are various uh, classification there are various uh, category or there are various options by which i can identify so as a student can be be a part of the many thing so for your betterment i can explain this last statement with the help of the example yes this one now this simple example i can take you what is mean by the and how we can recently is easy to improve see this is a person there is a person this person could be a student or a student or faculty okay i can write in short way or you can write in the thing properly or i can write in detail manner so that thing will be will be clear if a student person is student then what is the year he be or she belong to the maybe first year maybe second year and maybe third year if it is the person student then what is the speciation in him the first semester second semester so in the first semester uh, you can easily say what is the uh, speciation maybe he belong to the computer graphics maybe he belong to the gaming maybe he belong to the cyber security maybe is core computer engineer he can write score maybe the student could be the part of the integrated so in short and way i can write mim maybe a uh, student belong to the ai speciation so this is what you are observing that i am just preparing the my decision tree based on the my input so here i have taken the various features but if you want to write or draw the actual uh, tree properly then you have to choose the appropriate features so this is the point uh, is okay age is a person age is a factor you can take the simple example so age you can define the age if the person belong to the 50 a 50 years old or less than 50 years old if person is is to have 50 years old then what is the range he or she belong to so just like example just fit age okay so age is age is less than 50 then the person will be the uh we can say the uh, normal person if person is greater than the 50 so i can consider this is the aged person if person is normal then what is the its range the person is normal so he can belong to the 5 years old to the 20 years old the person can be ranges from the 30 to 40 or maybe the 41 to 50 or 49 you can take whatever you want to take so based on this range we can say if the uh, the person belong to the 5 to 20 years then he will be considered into the student so this is the outcomes we can generate the person will be the student if the um, the, the person belong to the 20 to 40 so the person could be the employee of any company this is only the just possible outcomes i am expecting and uh, there is some chance i can expect uh, uh, the person could be the employee if he is a 41 to the 50 the person could be the employee and he can also be a married person so i can write over here that he is a married employee okay so this is our cut area by which i can create the decision tree so married employee so having seen this decision tree you can easily say what is the possible age of the person who are the employee so you can easily say 20 to 40 if you are just giving the age just is 42 or 43 so you can say the person is married employee 
so this is what this is the our two example by which you can easily say we are identifying we're trying to understand what is the actual decision tree so in this case we have taken the many different kind of the attributes but here we are taking only the one attribute that is known as the age based on the age we can filter the our information now this is clear to all right now the this is clear Yes, tell me right now. This is clear. Yes. Yes. So we have a uh, interesting examples. So uh, what decision tree? So we have already discussed. So let us discuss the advantages of the decision tree and disadvantages. No need to speak again. But whatever I have spoken so far, this summary advantage. Decision tree generate the understandable rules. Okay. it is very understandable rules we can easily understand if we have the age less than the 50 or less greater than that we can move to the respective direction and decently perform the classification without requiring the much computation that is a big advantage but in the classification algorithm it requires the many computation while doing the many practical parts you will feel and decently are capable for handling the both data that is the continuous so when we are continuous it means we are talking about the regression approach when we have the categorical data then we will talk about the classification approach this is the point we have to understand and decision tree provide the clear indication of which fields are most important for predicting our classification so with help of the seeing the example of the decision tree you can easily say the our problem will be regression or classification that is a big beauty or that is a big advantage of the our decision tree algorithm in the machine learning while well, talking about the disadvantage part so disadvantage part i have taken over here in detail manner and for notes purpose you have to understand properly disentry are less appropriate for estimate the task where the goal is to predict the value of a continuous attributes so when we have the continuous attributes to predict the something then it will uh, not provide the better result it would not provide the better result it support the continuous nature based on the data so decision tree regression you can use but very frankly speaking today i am speaking most of the people will not like to use a decision tree regression many times we will always use the decision tree classifier that is reason but if you want to use a decision tree regression then you can easily use no one will stop you but it will not provide the better result compared by the normal regression problem so if i am solving any problem that is a uh, any regression regression based problem and i am using the decision tree regression so definitely i will not have the better result that is the point you can understand and something depend on the nature of the data or something depend on the data set and decision tree are prone to the errors in classification problem that is the point you have to understand decision tree are prone to error in the classification problem with many class and relatively small number of training example so this is the point you have to understand they are prone to the error in classification problem this is the point why because in the decision tree what you are observing just look at this example here we are first we are dividing the age so age is a one of the feature now i am just choosing the normal and the aged person so i am taking the two different other features what is the category of the employee or category of the person that is a normal or aged so second feature will be applicable over here at the next level i am just uh, uh, define the range range so what is range of the you know, age So to 5 to 20, 20 to 40, and 50 to 41 to 50. So again, I am using the third feature. So when we have the multiple features in the decision tree classifier, so definitely we can get some chance. We can have the errors. There is no guarantee, but there are some chance by which we can say we can have the error. So this outcomes all these disadvantages coming through the our real life situation as well, and this is the summary part. but we will feel this advantage part while working on the decision tree classifier and decision tree regression that is the point so when you are using the decision tree classifier then you must be keep in mind you must have to use you must have to choose the training data set properly and third advantage third is the most important point that is the most important point i am speaking over here third disadvantage is A decision tree can be computationally expensive to train. This is the point you have to understand. This is too costly while training the our data under the decision tree classifier. So this is a big problem we are facing, and this is the big problem. This is a big problem. 
and why this is coming from so this is coming from the our uh, important algorithm that is known as the cloning algorithm so where studying the fundamental of the ai and machine learning when you have studied the fundamental of the ai so in the ai we have seen the max min problem max min algorithm when we have seen the alpha beta proning so alpha beta proning and we have seen the max min problem so based on this problem we can say we have a proning algorithm proning means uh, to generate the result properly so if we generating part from the ai the, it would be expensive to classify the data i am repeating once again it will be too much costly while using the proning algorithm so because we have to see the proning algorithm in the fundamental of ai and machine learning alpha beta proning and max min problem you have seen so proning algorithm definitely will be expensive when we have the many sub trees definitely this is the point because i will show the my practical example the why which you can easily understand yes sir yes this is a too much expensive because it will take much time to distribute the data to classify the data properly so definitely this is the case we can have the we can have the this advantage term so i am repeating once again it's a, it, it's not uh, predict the very well manner uh, when we have the continuous nature of the data so condition tree is regression is not a better example and it talking about the classification so there are some chance we can get the error because our uh, errors are uh, not error are prone to the classification problem so that in that when we have the multiple classes of based on the multiple features so our train data should be proper trained and definitely if we are doing the training in better way so it cost will be high so computation cost so computation expenses will be there and alpha beta proning is the best best example that defines the its cost could be high example of the alpha beta proning uh, uh, proning algorithm we have a alpha beta minimum max algorithm definitely i am speaking the name of this part so this could be the two uh, three reasons why which we can say the disadvantage of the decision tree would be so as i told you from the previously what we discussing this point so alpha beta proning is just different example min max and max uh, max min is a different uh, algorithm which is used to define the or followed by the proning algorithm definitely and all these are required to implement inside the searching algorithm part so this was the admission one is part so before telling to all the right now what is the decision tree algorithm so just let me know right now is it clear to all the advantage part and disadvantage part is it clear to all the advantage part disadvantage part yes sir it is because something i am just taking see this uh, the uh, examples i have taken from the our uh, fundamental ai and machine learning algorithms only and we have discussed this subject when we have discussed this topic so i'm taking the same concept over here i'm not writing anything okay so that's a definitely we have to understand this thing properly now after understanding this point disadvantage there one is part again the question should be stated what is a decision tree algorithm actually somewhere it is written so i copied the same content over here but the thing should be clear the decision tree is supervised machine learning algorithm that look like the inverted trees and where each node represent a predictor variable that is the features and the link between the nodes represents a decision uh, and each leaf node represent an outcome that is a response variable okay so outcome response variable also known as the our dependent variable while independent variable is recognized by the predictor variable and features so based on this point we can say let look at this example is it visible to this diagram this diagram is visible to all yes yes see you can easily see uh, on the left on the right side we have the inverted trees so in the inverted trees we have to start the our thing from the root and we have its branches and each and every branches contain the some leaves so these are the leaf nodes we have so in the decision tree we have the leaf node okay in the decision tree we have the root node as well and the last node that is also known as the internal node 
okay that is also known as the internal node and these internal node are known as the intermediate nodes and this is also known as the predictor nodes but when talking about the leaf node so these leaf nodes are the outcomes of the our they say nodes or this is the our outcomes of the our internal nodes so if you're talking about the decision node or internal node we are having the same sense and this is also known as the predator node last node that is a leaf node which is also known as the response node so the point you have to clear the point you should be clear properly the leaf node will be represented by the response node and that is the outcome of the our decision node what would be the possible outcomes so in the our diagram is defined the everything properly so that's why in spite from the our decentry architecture diagram or the structure we can say the root will be on the top side okay the root will be on the top side and leaf node will be on the bottom side but this is the point yeah so at the uh, bottom side you can say i have drawn the reverse diagram which contain the root and leaves and other branches part so what we are doing we are moving from bottom to up so it depends upon the information from which direction you are reading from top to down i can read so i can say the top on the top side root will be there and two node will be the one node single node in any decision tree or any tree the root will be the one only so it can have the many children it can have the many nodes that can be identified by the internal node or uh, internal nodes and that can also be identified by the predictor nodes as well so decision tree is has the following key features what the root node so the root node is starting point of the tree at this point the first split is performed second internal node we have each internal node represents the decision points and that is known as the predictor node and this is also known as the internal node that eventually leads to the prediction of the outcomes and leaf node or terminal node this is known as the leaf node or terminal node that is the final outcomes final result we can say and that is also known as the terminal node and branches so branches are the connections between the nodes and they are represented by the arrows in the our descent tree diagram while in the actual diagram in the actual tree it is of the branches so the connection the linking between the uh, uh, internal node to its next internal node will be maintained by the branches each branch represents the response such as a yes or no so we have this one this is the point let us see the another example but before let us see the another example uh, could you tell me right now any doubt so far you have so please you can ask me right now The decision tree fundamental is clear to all right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I have not gone through the deeply study. I have just given the overview of the decision tree properly because this is again important point. This which compromising by the two parts, that is the regression as well as the classification. This is only the one and last concept, last uh, algorithm that defines the both uh, machine learning approaches. that is a regression and classification as well but i suggest to when you have any problem so just uh, you can try to see the real life problem based on the decision tree that is followed by the classification only. so uh, let me explain the next example and uh, in this example uh, you can say suppose uh, you are hosting a huge party and you want to know how many your guests are vegetarian or non vegetarian so from this point i have created, uh, i have just taken this images and this is our part let's say you hosted a, a huge party and you want to know how many your guests were non vegetarian to solve this problem let us create a simple decision tree this is our condition did the guest eat chicken so if they are eating so they will consider into the non vegetarian but if they are not uh, not eating the chicken so we have to ask them the question did the guest eat the mutton so if they are saying yes i eat the mutton then definitely the cons this uh, the uh, uh, guest will be considered to the non veg while if he or she is not eating the chicken or mutton then we have a third option so we can ask did the guest eat the seafood if he or she says yes then he will be considered as a non veg but still he is saying 
no i don't like to eat a uh, seafood as well so definitely you he will be concerned to the veg so this is a our our dysentery which is used to decide the everything properly so this or uh, this what this is also other condition see this is also a condition this is also condition and this is also condition and every time you are asking condition to take the uh, outcomes or decision so what you are observing these conditions is also known as the these conditions also known as the internal nodes of predictors nodes okay and this base or non base you are getting no base non base so this is known as the leaf node leaf node so leaf node would be what are the leaf node this leaf node terminal node or response node will be the non base so these would these are the our leaf node which decide that this is our decision okay so that finally we have to understand this is a simple example so structure of the dysentery will look like like this one get the guess it chicken the first uh, time you are asking so this is the first node we have so this would be the root node and uh, this is a leaf node and this would be also leaf node so the connections between the our root node to the internal node that is also known as the branch so it is already written but i have already explained and uh, this is also known as a dysentery or dysent node so we have this point now this is a leaf node as you can see observe over here i have already explained so this is a structure of a dysentery so in the examination i can ask uh, draw the uh, example draw the dysentery structure with that for some example so it is better idea we can take this kind of the example to show or to justify your answer properly so this was our dysentery examples this was our dysentery concept okay uh, tell me right now this is clear to all this example is clear to all yes sir yes sir yeah so this is the introductory part of the dysentery what is a dysentery so today somebody in the today's class you have to understand dysentery is a supervised learning algorithm in which you can take the regression based problem you can take the regression based problem you can take the classification based problem you can sort any other problem no issue but the problem should be followed by the two approach one is a regression then we have a dysentery regressor if your problem is having the uh, classification based problem then you can say now you have the dysentery classifier so dysentery classifier is more important rather than the dysentery regressor but if time permits then i will tell you the thing properly without the practical dysentery regressor as we will see the dysentery classifier 